A 16 year old came to the office with something growing on the side of his face. He was hoping it'd be a quick fix, but instead it turned into over two years of treatment with multiple surgeries, including replacing a large segment of his jaw with his leg bone. Check out part three of this multi-video case today on The Open Reduction. Welcome to The Open Reduction, your channel covering all topics oral maxillofacial surgery. I'm Dr. Tom Bolton, and today is part three of a huge case that was way too big to fit into one video. It all started when a 16-year-old male came in with a painless growing mass in his left lower jaw. If you haven't yet, check out part one and two in this video series, where I go over the initial clinical presentation, the workup, and the major surgery to remove this tumor. As a quick recap, this patient was diagnosed with an ameloblastoma, a locally aggressive tumor in the left lower jaw. It's large, extending from the paracymphysis to the angle and causing displacement of tooth number 17. It extends to the inferior border and is also causing substantial cortical expansion. He was treated with a surgical resection, a reconstruction plate, and a portion of his lower leg bone, the fibula, was removed and transplanted into his jaw. I allowed six months of healing to ensure that the fibula remained healthy and viable. Now comes another technically challenging portion of the case. He has a working mandible with no cosmetic deformity, but he has no chewing ability on the left side. The fibular free flap is amazingly versatile and has worked very well here, but the fibula just simply doesn't have the bone volume of the natural mandible. There is a large step between his mandible and the fibula, and the fibula is also buried in almost two centimeters of soft tissue. This is a restorative challenge. The only way this patient is going to get fixed permanent teeth in this area is with dental implants. He's going to need as many implants as possible in this area to create a stable prosthetic device. I decided to perform another virtual surgery to treatment plan this case. Thankfully, there's enough bone to place one implant distal to the last tooth in his natural mandible. The rest of the implants will need to be placed in the fibula. The challenge here is that the fibula has a limited amount of bone volume. It's very deep and there are screws that run throughout it holding it to the reconstruction plate, which I have to avoid. I performed a virtual surgery to determine how many implants I could place and the best size implants for this area. The virtual surgery is extremely helpful as a map to where I'm gonna place these implants, but it's limited. The problem is there's no way they can make a guy that's going to help me during the surgery. So this is all going to have to be done freehand. This next procedure is performed in the office under IV sedation. I laid a full thickness flap and dissected down to the fibula and then placed these implants under copious irrigation. Here's the post operator graph and I'm thrilled with where these implants are at. They're parallel with each other. I've managed to avoid all of the screws and maximize the size of the implant for the bone volume that's present. I allowed four months of osteointegration. Now comes the next challenging part. These implants are buried in almost two centimeters of soft tissue, so normal healing abutments aren't gonna do us any good. Even custom long healing abutments aren't even close to what we need. I ended up using chimneys to expose the implants so that the prosthodontist had access to them.
all the implants integrated very well. Now it's up to the prosthodontist to make a fixed appliance that he can use. At this point, we're at nearly a year and a half of treatment for him, but things are moving along very nicely. His tumor has been successfully treated, he has full use of his mandible, and he has dental implants that have integrated very nicely in his fibula. So you can see this patient's come a long way. He initially presented when he was 16 with a large mass in his left mandible, and here we are over two years later, and he has a fully functioning mandible with teeth. This patient started care as a teenager and he's now a full grown adult and he's doing great. Thanks for watching this video series. I know it was a lot of videos and a lot of information, but it was a huge case and it was really rewarding when it was all said and done. Please click those like and subscribe buttons and check out the other videos on my channel for more interesting OMFS cases. I'm Dr. Tom Bolton. I'll catch you next time on The Open Reduction.